Welcome back. It seems like when we talk about fossil free fuels, EVs immediately top the conversation. But as we found here in East Tennessee, our alternative fuel sources don't stop there. East Tennessee and Tennessee, we've got some great examples of people um, making the switch, if you will. We've got examples of pretty much every alternative fuel, I think, out there, but it's not widespread. A scenario Jonathan Overly and his crew with East Tennessee Clean Fuels looks to change. Their job, fuel conversations with businesses thinking about exploring alternative power sources. It's really trying to be the connective tissue and help them answer questions, and if we can do it, connect them to other fleets that are already having success so they can tell them about any problems they had as well as what the benefits are to them making that change. Now, one group looking to make a difference is Green Energy Biofuel. They're located just south of the river here along Alcoa Highway. What they do is they go to various restaurants, take their used cooking oil, and then that cooking oil will be converted into fuel. All right, so this is our truck that goes out in the field and collects from restaurants, and this truck's name is Elbow Grease. A fitting name for a dirty job that makes a cleaner burning fuel. Cal McClintic currently works with close to 1,000 restaurants from Chattanooga to the Tri-Cities. Translated, that comes to six to 10,000 gallons of used cooking oil collected per week. We take it and we offload it here, and this is where we process it, get all the wastewater out of it, all the food chunks out of it, to where it's like 99% pure oil. And once it's reached that point, we ship it down to our main plant in South Carolina, and that's where it's all gathered. And from there, it's uh, distributed off to make biodiesel with. A process that equals savings for commercial fleets. The good thing about biodiesel is you can just blend it with regular diesel, and a common blend is like 20%. They call it B20. So it's 80% petroleum diesel and 20% biodiesel. So they get about a 15% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. No new infrastructure needed. No new refueling equipment. But that's just one alternative. Over at the city of Knoxville, utilizing alternative fuel sources has become a top priority. We've got about 80 assets altogether that run off renewable propane. About 25 or so are these, are these lawn mowers. Nicholas Bradshaw oversees the city of Knoxville's fleet services. If there is a greener option available uh, and it's, it's affordable and, and doable, then that's what we're going to buy. EV being our first option, that's a tier one for us, and then an alternative fuel vehicle is the next tier, and then a hybrid is the third tier, and then if, if none of those are available or realistic options, then we can do a traditional gasoline or diesel. The benefit, lower maintenance costs for starters. There's a good business case for it, and, and uh, the fact that propane can usually be obtained at a cheaper per gallon price than, than gasoline, for one. Uh, the environmental benefits are probably first and foremost. Uh, it's a cleaner burning fuel, there's fewer emissions. The city of Knoxville is probably a good example. They use renewable propane. So it's actually propane, but it just comes out of a um, petroleum refinery that instead of putting crude oil in, they put renewable resources in and get pentane, ethane, gasoline, diesel, etc., out as products. So it has a greenhouse gas reduction. And while most discussions about alternative fuels are linked to vehicles, other sources are now beginning to make impacts in other ways. We are now to 1% of all the electricity that's used in Tennessee comes from solar. Mm. Now, being a 55-year-old person, I remember in the days where that was laughable. Sure, do we want it to maybe be 20 or 50% one day? Mm, don't know that that's ever going to happen. But the fact that it's even 1% is kind of amazing to an older person like me. You know, you, you heard at the beginning of the story, there are examples of all kinds of alternative fuels in our area, but again, it's still not widespread. Yeah. Well, first, I'm taking, you know, I'm older than he is, so <laughs> I'm, I'm first a little Both attentive. of us are. But yeah. It, it sounds like, though, that it's just one of these things that you need more education, yeah. more development to get more people on board, because a lot of that's going to be new information for people. Yeah, exactly. And, and you even heard from Jonathan Overly, who you just heard from there, stress that if, if a business or an individual is really looking to switch over to alternative fuel sources, do your homework first. It may not be for you right now, so do your homework. I do want to note, though, we did not talk a lot about electric vehicles, but Pellissippi State's Hardin Valley Campus is hosting the National Drive Electric Festival later this month, and we'll have those details over on WAT.com. Just look for the story.